Hello and welcome to a very special Spectrum Week edition of Mark Fixes Stuff. In today's episode we'll be looking at the 1983 classic by Matthew Smith, Manic Minor. And from the opening bars of the music, you know you're home. I don't think I've played this for about 20 years, but immediately I know exactly where I'm going and what I'm doing. Don't know why I jumped over that, I always do, and I just did again. Okay, coming up to the difficult diagonal, yes, fantastic, coming through, got to avoid fishy Homer Simpson mouth man, jump over the top of his head. Now I know you can actually land on this platform if you wait long enough, but it's not worth it for the extra air bonus under here, I always misjudge this one, but no, it's okay this time, and in between the two poisonous plants, which inexplicably kill you when the obviously radioactive glowing key doesn't. Yes, he must be very allergic to nettles. Dropping back through, over the top of Mr. One Man Band Wind Up Homer Simpson Face Dude, and then underneath this platform, which again inexplicably hides your head from view. Down towards the bird's eye potato waffle that's glowing in the corner. Level 1. Ah, the cold room is level 2, with ridiculously shaped penguin and some glowing tennis rackets. Yeah, so we'll just hop over Mr. Penguin's head onto the disappearing platform, grab this tennis racket here, and lovely. Up here, underneath the undercarriage of this flightless bird, hop to the top deck. We'll just wait for him to come back now, and then we'll leap over his head, give him a bit of a haircut with my size 9 boots, before we go and get the last glowing tennis racket down there. And we'll just jump out there for a moment over the top and drop down for the suicide slide. Lovely. Level 3, where it all probably goes wrong. Over the top of the ostrich stroke green flamingo, who knows. And uh, yeah, just pop up and get that key. It's always good to get it that way rather than the other way where you die. Onto the moving conveyor belt and up underneath the bird. Oh, that was a bit close. I can't remember what to do here. I've got a feeling that, yeah, I need to time it by going over the birds. That's it. And then jump up and get that one. Oh, and he misses. And I've got a feeling that's all. Yes, it's all over. Okay, so over the top of Mr. Green Flamingo. Damn you, green flamingo. Up onto the platform, and then onto the conveyor belt. Lovely. Right, I think this time what we'll do is we'll wait for Mr. Pink Flamingo, probably in his natural environment. And what am I doing? Yeah, stay back. That's it, time. Now over the top. Yes, catch me if you can, sucker. Got that second key, and time it perfectly to get the last key on the top. Ah, but wait. I've forgotten that other key down there. Don't make the mistake of trying to jump right to left to get that one. You'll fall to your death. It has to go left to right and into the uh, strange looking hatched chevron area. Into the abandoned uranium workings underneath the spider, which kills you. And up onto the first platform. Jumping across. Look out for those deadly, deadly performing seals down there. That's right. They're going to eat you and they don't care. Have to get this key here. And I must admit, the rest of this game escapes me now, as it has been 20 years. But let's see, we can just jump over and land there. And onto this smaller platform. Lovely. And up here, onto the disappearing platform, hopping as quickly as possible to preserve it in case I need to get back up here at any point. Uh, oh, that's too early. Way, way too early. Okay, last man now. Hop up here, lovely. Can't remember, I seem to remember there's a bit of a trap up here. The last key, I have to go right to left to get it. Can't quite remember though. Over the top, that's it. Drop down. Oh heck, we'll work it out when we get there. Jump! Oh yes. Haha, <laughs> you can't fetch me with your ball, suckers. Uh, left onto the uh, collapsing platform. Quick bounce. Up we go. Underneath the very poisonous, very static spider. Grab that last key and hop across. I think I've made a mistake here. I can't get it that way. If I jump, will I float? No. 
I'll fall to my death. Anyway, Manic Miner. I think one of the things that was most endearing about Manic Miner was it felt epic. Back in 1983, this game was absolutely everywhere. BBC Micros had it in the local library, it was on the Spectrum, it was on absolutely every system known to man. It was almost like the first computer blockbuster. Now, one of the things which really makes it playable is its pixel perfect positioning, meaning you can play it again and you can actually work out to the amount of key presses where you need to be to get from one platform to the next. For me, Manic Miner is one of the Spectrum classics, um, without which I think the platform genre would have been much poorer indeed. This is Mark for Mark Fixes Stuff, signing out, and see you in the next episode.